Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be taking you through a zero waste day in the life. So we're going to try and make some bread rolls today and I'm going to do my laundry and show you my kind of low waste sustainable laundry routine and right now I'm going to cycle down to my local kind of unpackaged zero waste shop to get some flour and some other weekly groceries so I'll take you guys with me. This is the first time I'll be going to one since the beginning of lockdown. So I'm interested to see how it's changed in terms of restrictions and rules and things like that. And I definitely have seen a big change in people's attitudes in London and the UK around going to supermarkets and just how much they are shopping and consuming. I think it has had an impact, so yeah. Okay, so just before I go out, I'm gonna put my laundry on so that it's ready to hang up when I get back. And I just wanted to share that I'm using Small as a new kind of laundry capsule. It comes in this cardboard box. I'm still confused by the child lock. I find it really hard to get out. Obviously I'm clearly a child, but yeah, I just wanted to show you this is, it's like cruelty free, it's 100% plastic free and it's like a subscription service and so it makes it really easy. And that's what it looks like. So I put my laundry on now and then go to the zero waste shop. So a couple of you guys have asked me whether it's uncomfortable to wear my barefoot shoes while I'm cycling and actually it's completely fine now that I've gotten used to it. It was a little uncomfortable at first. I also just want to say a massive thank you to Grimbag for sponsoring today's video. I love that their bags are made from upcycled materials and they try to be as low waste as possible and of course making everything in an ethical way in their ateliers and just making sure that everything is really high quality and will last you for an incredibly long time. And of course, safety first, so I'm putting my bike helmet on. My bike is actually used to be my dad's and he bought it secondhand off eBay. So we are a trying to be a family where we buy as much secondhand stuff as possible. And my seat is actually reclaimed from another bike that was being thrown away. So it was much more affordable and cheaper to get a secondhand bike. I just absolutely love cycling in London, especially at the moment while it's pretty quiet. So I headed off to Peckham to go to Gather just to get a few things from the unpackaged shop. Sorry I couldn't film very much in the shop, there was like a lot of social distancing going on and obviously lots of precautions so I only got some little snapshots but I only ended up getting three things anyway so I got some flour, I just reused this plastic bag um, that I had from some kind of delivery thing before and I just got some flour for making bread rolls as I said earlier and I just wanted this to bring up the point like here I got some deluxe muesli and like yes this is like quite a fancy bag but also like this works just as well. I think what's really important to note, especially since we're in plastic free July, sustainable swaps don't have to look good. That's not the, the point. And I have definitely been guilty of making kind of zero waste, low waste sustainable living look really like aesthetic because unfortunately that's what does well online. But I'm trying to move away from that and to really kind of talk about the swaps that really matter. So. Obviously I have these and I'm gonna use these for as long as they last, hopefully ever. Um, but also just using plastic bags that you already have is really, really, really important. And this is what genuine sustainable living looks like rather than going out and buying new stuff. So as I said, I got some muesli because I eat that every morning. I usually eat porridge, but I usually eat that in the winter because when it's a bit colder. Some flour to make bread rolls, and then I just got some chocolate chips because we're making pancakes. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about plastic free July. So a lot of people are doing it and I've done it many years before, but this year I'm taking a very different approach. If you don't know who Janu is, she's a really wonderful YouTuber and Instagrammer and she talks a lot about sustainable living, basically what I talk about as well, but her conversation is much more nuanced than mine. And she recently did a really great post about plastic and actually why are we not talking about the whole story? Why are we just talking about when we have plastic and we get rid of it, what happens to it then? Why aren't we talking about it from the very, very, very beginning? 
beginning, sort of how it's produced, also the communities that are living near toxic factories, because it's always communities of colour who are most directly affected by waste from factories or pollution when it comes to plastic produ production or living near factory farms and things like that. So this Plastic Free July, instead of trying to reduce my plastic waste, I'm going to be reusing as much as everything, um, but I'm also going to be dedicating to or dedicated to learning about everything to do with plastic from the communities who are most affected by it to the processes to understanding why those who manufacture plastic aren't held accountable and also trying to better understand recycling and plastic production recycling and why it's not clearer i'm also going to be doing a video next week on why recycling is still so important so definitely watch out for that but I wanted to dedicate this kind of month and hopefully the rest of the year and onwards to trying to make my activism far more nuanced and intersectional because if we're not talking about the communities who are most affected by plastic production and things like that, then we're not telling the whole story as Janu says. So that's what I wanted just to add for this whole kind of conversation around Plastic Free July. I think if you're doing it, that's great. If um, But I would really urge you to read and read widely and understand why plastic is so bad in the beginning, but also that is all plastic really that bad? Because you have to take into consideration that some plastic is necessary. So just vilifying all plastic really isn't a great nuanced conversation. And I 100% have been guilty of this before, but I'm trying to learn as much as possible. I'm also, if you haven't seen my everything I read during lockdown, you won't know that I am currently reading this book. This is all about kind of using Chicago as an example of how environments and urban planning have been designed to essentially most affect communities of colour. And I want to not be one dimensional. I want my activism to be for everyone, not just people who look like me. I want to just be better, basically. So I'm also going to be finishing off this. I just finished reading Clean and White, which is another book about the beginnings of environmental racism in the US, which is a really, really, really great book. And I think continually learning is really important. So I'm going to hang up my laundry now. I'm going to show you what I do because I don't use a dryer. I hang it up and then we're going to make some bread rolls. So Sustainable living is, you know, it goes from the kind of everyday things all the way to learning and understanding and making the conversation a lot more nuanced because at the end of the day, it shouldn't be on the individuals to make huge changes, especially when the individuals have other injustices that they are fighting before they can even think about trying to live sustainably. So when I hang up my laundry, I literally just hang up. We don't have a dryer, but it's all, I think it's all, is it obvious? I think it's better, more environmentally friendly. I need to do some research on actual stats, but to hang up the washing bin. Drying, obviously it's better in the summer, not so great in the winter, but a clothes horse, I think this is really inexpensive. We bought it secondhand, so I think it was like 10 pounds or something like that. So it is also a more affordable way of doing your laundry as well. Also just another tip, if you wash your clothes on a colder setting, that is actually more eco-friendly. And also, if you have any active wear, then hanging them up will definitely extend their life. So even if you have a dryer, I would highly recommend putting any active wear hanging up instead. Otherwise it can, like the threads can come loose and you're gonna have to replace them much more quickly. So definitely for the active wear, hang them up instead. Flour the yeast, the sugar, the salt, and oil into a bowl. Already. We spend the rest of the afternoon just making some homemade bread rolls. They are really, really easy to make. We just use some random recipe that we found online from like good food or good eats or something like that. And we're, we're quite lazy bakers, to be honest, and we just threw together whatever we had. So they're not perfect, but they definitely were delicious and it just did the job. I also put a little bit too much yeast in, but it didn't seem to affect it. And yeast is the only thing that I couldn't find unpackaged, but I think 
that's okay to be honest i can't find many unpackaged bread rolls around and this making these bread rolls i think cost probably about mm, one pound two one pound fifty for eight bread rolls and they were delicious i'm not gonna lie so we made those and then we pretty much ate half of them for dinner <laughs> and then after we made these bread rolls i did some more reading because i'm trying to read as diversely as possible so i started reading an isabel allende book island beneath the sea and that's pretty much all i did for the rest of the evening so it was a very chill casual kind of zero waste day just trying to show you some of the zero waste things or sustainable things that i do throughout the day on a weekend obviously this wasn't a working day <laughs> The only thing I didn't show you guys was my compost, but I will keep that for the next video because it has definitely changed a little bit. And one last thing to add is Grimbag are doing a giveaway of this go bag if you're interested on their Instagram. So I will leave that link in the description if you want to go and enter that. But as always, there will be another one at some point. So thank you guys for watching i hope you guys enjoyed this more casual video just kind of seeing what i get up to during a kind of normal day trying to be more sustainable trying to be more low waste and i'll see you guys very soon i will get this patch covered i've just been very lazy but every time i see it in a video i'm always like oh, i've got to cover it so i will do it <laughs> anyway Thank you for watching, I will see you guys next time.